Well, as we told you earlier, a third of all babies are born with an ear deformity. Now, in the past, they could only be solved by an expensive, painful surgery. But that's all changing thanks to Dr. Matthew Travato of Pediatric Plastic Surgery Institute. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Doctor. Thank you, Tom. All right. Um, let's, uh, before we get into the details of, of this uh, process, uh, what kind of awareness are you trying to raise uh, with the prospective mothers uh, about uh, the possibility of ear deformities? Good question. You know, we all remember growing up in our classrooms, there being that one child, or maybe it was even us ourselves, who were that child that uh, had an ear deformity that kids made fun of, mm -hmm. either calling you Dumbo ears or Spock ears or elf ears. And so what we want to do in pediatric plastic surgery is to try to identify those deformities before the child uh, is socially integrating, is in school. And so by identifying the deformity at birth or in very early infancy and correcting it through a non-surgical treatment, mm -hmm. uh, we hope to be able to you know, eliminate the bullying, the teasing. And so our goal in pediatric plastic surgery is to identify the problem early, recognizing it early, diagnosing it early. And so that's our goal. And how do you recognize something like that? How can a mom or a dad or a grandma see there's something different about uh, their newborn's ear. You know, we try to get the word out uh, through pediatricians, um, through the uh, neonatal uh, care units in hospitals, and basically it's just by increasing that level of awareness as to what a normal ear looks like and what a deformed ear looks like at birth, we hope to be able to identify the kids, get them into the office early, and treat them early. All right, the sooner the better, I sooner assume, the for better. this. We have about, you know, in infants, it's about a two-week to three-week window before the cartilage of the ear actually starts to firm up. And so we can actually mold it almost like clay before that time. So that early window, that critical window, is, is really important. All right, let's get into this procedure now. No surgery, no, it's not invasive. What, what is it uh, that you do do to, to the newborns here then? So basically what we do, and I can show you on the device uh, here, is we mold the cartilage by placing this device onto the child's ear itself. Mm -hmm. And so this basically sticky, soft, celastic, plastic, uh, device cradles the child's ear so imagine mm -hmm. if the ear was sticking through this little area mm -hmm. and what it does is it helps to shape and we have a couple of little pieces that we use at over the four or five week treatment period we shape the ear and we can eliminate any curvature problems or any prominent ear problems or some of the other common deformities wow okay and so the the baby would be wearing this the for the baby wears or four this weeks? for about five or six weeks, okay. oftentimes, and uh, by that point the cartilage has hardened enough; it's stiff enough that we've put it into the proper shape, and the treatment is complete. There's wow. no surgery. There's no teasing. There's no bullying. Right. Uh, Unless you're going to tease a five-week-old baby, which you're not going to do. Well, it's <laughs> funny that you say that because just recently I had a patient. The mother came in very upset and beautiful little boy, and uh, the mom said, you know, we went to church, and one of the women in church said, oh, look at what a cute little baby. He has cute little elf ears. Oh, no. And so, you know, you would think, you know, that in this day and age, right. that, uh, but it's just, uh, people just aren't totally aware about it. That's but, ridiculous, yeah. Um, and, and it's starting earlier, it seems like. Wow. All right. Now, we do have some uh, before and after pictures okay. that we're going to take a look. Uh, obviously, the left is before, and the right is, is after. Wow. Right. What a change. So this child had a prominent ear, and um, that's basically where the angle of the ear is, is very, very obtuse coming off of the side of the baby's head. And uh, if you recognize, President Obama has uh, prominent ears, and he was recently interviewed about it. Uh, but uh, that was the first child that you had there. Okay, and so prominent ear means they just kind of stick Ears out. Ears are sticking out. Okay, I kind of yeah. like mine do, don't they? <laughs> Yours are okay. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. <laughs> All right, and, uh, and how, okay, so I guess, how did this come about? How did this idea come about that we could mold, you know, baby's ears this early on? You know, um, plastic surgeons have been molding different types of cartilage in infancy for many, many years. In cleft lip children, we've been molding cartilage. In ears, the same thing, but only in until about two years ago did we finally uh, develop a product, a modular system, mm -hmm. such as the ear well here, which was uh, invented by Dr. Steve Bird, one of the founding members, uh, one of my partners at the Pediatric Plastic Surgery Institute, um, to actually create a device that's very simple to use and not very time consuming, mm -hmm. uh, the ear well. Before that, we were actually using dental amalgam to actually create little plastic pieces to shape the ear. They would fall off, it would take an hour to make, 
Mm -hmm. So it was very difficult. All right. And uh, we're close out of time, so tell me how we can learn more about uh, your practice and, and um, how we can do this. The simplest way would be to just visit our website, uh, ppsi.com. And it's Pediatric Plastic Surgery in uh, Institute. And uh, we'd be happy to talk to any pediatricians, parents, or uh, any other concerned family members. I love it. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for